Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about What If Season 2, Episode 3. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So obviously, this episode's a lot of fun because you get to see... You only get little moments here and there where you get to kind of see the more fun side of the Avengers. You got a little bit of that, like, Age of Ultron, kind of, like, at the beginning of the movie. So, it's just kind of neat to kind of get a little bit more of, like, fun. Getting to see what the Avengers are up to. Well, I mean, Natasha's working, but she's dealing with a villain. It's like, oh, yeah, here's someone from Hydra who's killed, like, was it 17? And it's like, no, 18. It's like, 18? It's like, oh, yeah, that situation in Nigeria, that was me. It's like, oh, that was you? Show off. And so, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of what, uh, it kind of reminds me of the Black Widow movie where it's just, like, you got to see, like especially with Yelena, like, the aspect of just kind of, like, yeah, the espionage thing, and, yeah, we're assassins, but we can have a little fun with it, you know, back and forth, banter. Then, uh, Tony playing, uh, mall Santa, while Steve is having to, basically, they're trying to keep all the moms off of Steve. To be fair, that is America's ass, after all. Um, you have Banner with Clint, who's trying to get a, uh, Iron Man toy, I'm assuming that's for his youngest, maybe, maybe not, but I love that it's like the last one and he doesn't want to give it to any kids because he's like, my wife said, bring the toy home or don't come home at all. But I love this ties into the end credits. If you look at the like the credits at the end, you see that all the Iron Man toys are gone, but all the Hawkeye's toys are still there. They they were originally 15% off. They slashed it. They were like, no, 25% off. Just take these, which is so, I feel so bad for Hawkeye because it's like, of course he would. That's playing into, he's everyone's like punching bag when it comes to the Avengers. He's literally no one's favorite Avenger except for Kate Bishop. She's the one person I'm like, Kate would buy a Hawkeye toy. In fact, she probably did. She's probably the one person who did. But I'm like, I'm sure Clint, it miffed Clint a little bit, but he's also like, I'm not too big into the spotlight thing. So makes you wonder where do the Avenger toys live? Like just using the OG six squad, who sells more? Like probably Tony, probably Cap. I, I, I'm curious what the order would be. I, it seems like Tony's at the top, but we don't know what the sales are like for Steve uh, Natasha, uh, Banner, you'd it'd be a little weird with Banner just because it's like, well, he is the Raging Hulk, at least at this point in the story, so it's like, oh, you're buying the Hulk, and it's just, he does end up destroying a lot of cities, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming this is pre, still in clear timeline-wise, but I'm assuming this is pre-Age of Ultron, I don't know whether this takes place, like, maybe post-Dark World, pre-Winter Soldier, maybe after Winter Soldier, because... Maria is director, and she kind of fell apart after Winter Soldier. I'm like, but why would Fury be away in this continuity and not be director? Like, may, has she held that position in a mainline continuity before? I would assume that would be, like, after they thought Fury was dead, maybe? Because he disappears after Winter Soldier, and then pops back up during Age of Ultron, if I remember correctly. I think he does. I just, I don't, rem I don't know where she would, timeline-wise, be where she would be director, but I don't know, maybe it's just, like, Fury's away for a little bit, but yeah, like, obviously, this is a very happy Hogan-centric episode, which I'm like, hey, that's good, considering, like, well, Happy got zombified last season and died, you know, that was, like, a main recurring, like, happy situation we got last season, so to have an episode built around him, you know, having to deal with Justin Hammer, uh, I'm just not quite sure what played out differently in this universe. They were just like, oh, he had more time, I'm like, to think about things. And so he managed to come out and he's, you know, obviously this is a Christmassy, obviously, setting, but it's also like, you know, a, a Die Hard parody. Um, which, it, which is funny considering like, well, Hawkeye itself was kind of a Die Hard parody in some capacities. But yeah, I even love when Happy's like, okay, he's going through the vents and stuff. No, this was beforehand, and he's getting Darcy's help. And Darcy's like, oh, what's this, Conair? No. Under Siege? Oh, she's like trying to run through the Rolodex. She's like, oh, yeah, I'm during, I'm down Blockbuster Isle trying to figure out what movie this is. And then later on, she's like, oh, my God, am I your Reginald Vale Johnson? He's like, that's what you remember about the movie? You can't remember the title, but you can remember Reginald Vale Johnson. I'm like, hey, put some respect over Reginald Vale Johnson's name, dude. Come on. But I get it. It's kind of like, really? That's the one thing you remember? You couldn't have said, you know. But I mean, it's like, it makes sense. She is on the outside, so it fits perfectly for her. It's like funny, because it's like, you don't even remember the character's name. You just remember Reginald Family Johnson playing the character. I actually don't know the character's name off the top of my head. To be fair, I'm not well-versed in Die Hard, any of them. I've seen most of them, but I, whatever the case may be. But yeah, Justin's break it, uh, showing up. 
taking over Avengers Tower all while the Avengers are away doing their thing. He kind of takes over. And I love that he's like, hey, there's one time when I was seven, he goes on this whole diatribe. They're like, I wonder if people like, isn't that a well like known story? I'm like, is that supposed to be a Christmas story? I feel like the tongue getting stuck to a flat I'm like, I feel like I remember that from a movie. Whatever movie it is, I don't think I've seen it. Even if it's a Christmas story, I've never seen a Christmas story. So I'm like, I, it sounds familiar. And that's the most pop, I feel like amongst Christmas movie, more classic, classic ones. I mean, next to like Home Alone. I would assume that be like one of the OG classics that so they'd be kind of referencing. I also love that he. It's been a hot minute since I've seen um, Iron Man two again. So did he constantly refer to himself? I know he had a very very like inflated ego, but I, I didn't remember. Did he talk about himself in a third person like that and constantly refer to like, oh, you, you're afraid you'll get the hammer or something like that. Like him talking about himself like that. I mean, he's egotistical enough. It's in perfect company with uh, Tony in that capacity because he's like, oh, I'm 10 times smarter than Tony and then I'll be like 10 times, 12 times stronger than um, Captain America because he's after some banner blood, which I'm like, oh, so Tony just casually still has some of Banner's blood. Does does Bruce know about that? Is this just a what are the continuities where I mean it's about trying to help Bruce be able to kind of access the I wonder in some shape or form I'm, I'm overthinking days but I'm curious did this end up helping him gain a little bit more control and become Professor Hulk like he did in between Infinity War and Endgame I wonder did like did Tony's like lay the groundwork this was happening in the background but like Bruce like kind of basically brought it home in the capacity of what I mean by like he some of the legwork was already done and he kind of like completed is what I'm trying to say so I'm curious if that's what happened or was it just a hundred percent Bruce like figuring it all out about combining his consciousness with the Hulks I just thought about something I it definitely I already knew it was pre uh, Age of Ultron, but I thought it was interesting that one of the two of the goons he hired, uh, it's like you're supposed to be a lock, lock, lock pick. He's like, this is my way of picking a lock. It's just him trying to smash this uh, durable uh, door. He's like, oh, and Justin's like, oh, I should have hired someone from Sokovia. So I'm like, oh, so Sokovia is obviously not in the state it was post uh, Age of Ultron. So, like I said, I, I figured this has to be post. Uh, Dark World because Thor doesn't show up until the end so I think it'd be very poetic to be like no this is post Dark World specifically post Dark World pre Winter Soldier or maybe it's somewhere in between Winter Soldier and Age of Ultron by the way circling back to it Happy's doing his um, John McClane of it all having to reluctantly um, he has to be the hero in the situation because he tried dialing all the Avengers, but once again, they're all busy with their respective situations. Tr uh, he accidentally injects himself with the, um, the Hulk blood, which I thought was so interesting. Once again, I had not seen another trailer. Like, the first trailer hit, that was even an avenue because I thought Hulk, like, I thought he was going full John McClane and would just be regular him. Wasn't expecting him to Hulk out, which I also love. If you look at the credits, his name is Happy... The Freak Hogan. I was like, come on with these names, dude. I've never... I'm, I'm not well-versed in all the Hulks. I know there is a Red Hulk, potentially. That's going to be in Captain America. Was it Brave New World? Yes, that's the new title for Cap 4 with uh, Sam is, like, the, Sam's first Cap movie. Because the only other Hulk I know was like Red Hulk. So I've never known like, there is a Purple Hulk. I wonder, is that actually a thing from the comic? So obviously there's a large array of Hulks, but the first one that popped up when I Googled it was Norman Osborn was like the perfect Hulk, which I was like, oh, that's interesting. Just nevertheless, it's just, um, comics have been around for a very, very long time, so probably an assortment of characters have probably gotten their hands on the gamma radiation and hulked out in some shape or form. But either way, I love that it's such a slow process for Happy that he's like, first it's one leg, then it's one arm, and then it's the other arm, and it's just slowly but surely his body's transforming. But he's still able to maintain a lot more of himself. Like, he kind of gives into the rage a little bit, but he learned from Banner. It's like, all right, I gotta calm down, gotta keep cool, I gotta, gotta do this, so... 
I love that sequence where he's going through all those, let's call Iron Legion, the whole um, automatic suits, which I love that he ripped through them, but it kind of reminds me of Samurai Jack. I want to say it's like the first episode or two, because like the first two or three episodes of Samurai Jack are put together almost like a TV movie. I want, it might have only been the first two episodes, but he goes through a part of Aku's like, I mean, Aku has a, like a, a lot of robots, but that episode, that episode in particular, because he's slicing through them, getting covered in oil, you kind of get a little bit of that, where it's just like, yeah, like, you're able to be a little brutal, but it's like, well, they're machines, and there's just oils, so it's just oil, so it's, but it, obviously, it's like, if this was anything else, you'd be busting through, like, human bodies, splurting blood, so it's just, it, it's interesting what the imagery of what it could be, if the situation was different, but, like, it immediately made me think of, like, because like that one in particular, I know Jack got covered in oil, and then he's like completely covered head to toe by the end of that uh, sequence when he's like fought all of Aku's robots. So it was just it just that's the first thing that came to my mind. I love the whole situation with Darcy trying to get to like the mainframe, the Jarvis mainframe, that right reboot him. And what I love is that she's like, "Oh man, it's it's just this dinky little computer," and then it opens up. Just how massive the mainframe actually is. And he's like, oh, you actually thought the doorknob was the entire mainframe? She's like, anyone would. And she starts going through some of the... Li we hear Friday, which I'm like, have we not... No, no, no. I was about to say that's the main one Tony used. I was about to say, like, have we... What what was the one that Peter had that sadly we haven't had back since Homecoming? Because she... Because... Is, is, because that's not Friday. That's something else. I don't remember... I forgot what that programming was called. I don't think it's Friday, because, like, Friday's the one he uses, like, after Jarvis becomes Vision. But it's the one in um, Homecoming. It's voiced by Jennifer Connelly. It's Karen, isn't it? I can't remember off the top of my head. I want to say its name is Karen, because I... Is that the only time she... Man, that's such a bummer. Is that the only time she's popped up as Karen, if that's what its name is? I think it is. Was Homecoming the only one? I don't... I've only seen Far From Home once... So I don't remember it ever coming up. And I definitely, to my not recommend, recollection, didn't pop up in um, at all in No Way Home. But either way, tangents and all that aside. But she ends up picking uh, Werner, which I love. They try to put it in later on. And, it's, and even um, Hill is like, wait, is this like a nihilist thing? Because it's like, oh, first like mach man controlled machine, now machine controls man. It's like, what about summoning the Avengers? Uh, how did they say in German? No. I'm like, what? what is this? What? What's the, what's the purpose of this program if it's not going to listen to you? And I love that they ended up like I forgot, what was it? Control Alt Delete ended up working for them before they put Werner in. Um, and it's like, oh, Darcy learned about it because of a previous internship. And it, Hill's like, have you ever had a real job? And she's like, nope. So it's like she's constantly bouncing from internship to internship. Because I'm trying to remember. We found it, I mean, because this is pre-WandaVision. So, like, didn't she actually, well, she does, like, she actually finished college and stuff. And she got a title and everything. Uh, by the time she's in WandaVision, I swear I remember there being this thing. I mean, to be fair, like, could we only get a little bit of Darcy in Love and Thunder? So we haven't fully and I've only seen that once, obviously, so I don't remember if we caught up to any life updates for her post WandaVision and in between those two movies or not. I don't I don't remember. We also have Hammer summering the Hulkbuster, which is a very uh, nice to kind of get a Hulk and Hulkbuster showdown pre Age of Ultron. But then at the last minute, you have the Avengers showing up and they end up attacking Happy because I, I love it coming full circle. Because the moment we find out Happy is the Hulk, the Hulk, you know, I'm like, wait, so why are the Avengers fighting him? It's like, well, they saw a bad guy. They just assumed it was. So I love Steve's like, is that Happy? And then uh, Tony was like, no. And it's like, no, he was right. Oh, speaking of Tony and Steve, I love that. J uh, I was about to call him Jason. Jesus. Justin opened up a present. He was like, oh, Tony got uh steve socks which is in the grand scheme of things it is like you are filthy rich tony and you got him socks i mean i guess it's like right when you you're shopping for like one of the most humble people out there like i guess you wouldn't know what to get him but i love that it's like oh the tabloids were wrong like the reports are wrong like these two don't like each other it's like yeah i guess from an outside perspective it just seems like they do but they don't i mean and hell this is pre-civil war too so but nevertheless, I love that Cap was like, oh, wait, I was right. It is happy. And so they end up turning towards Justin. 
he gets blown out the window, a la, you know, Die Hard, he's falling, and um, Happy grabs him, and it's like, oh, cool, uh, the, my head of security and everything, even though, like, the building's a mess, but Tony's just like, yeah, you know, insurance, well, he's kind of like, I don't need insurance, you are my insurance, I don't know if that's him implying, like, he actually doesn't have insurance, you better have insurance, because Pepper's not going to be happy about that, but I'd assume, I'd assume he have insurance just because Pepper would force him to do it, he probably has insurance, and he just doesn't know it because of Pepper, but yeah, but yeah, Happy's like, oh, there's there a cure? Tony skated right by that, so there's no clear indication whether or not he actually has a cure, so I guess, like, maybe they're going to have two Hulks in the tuner, but probably most likely Happy's going to be uh, cured. It is that thing of, like, it seems like such a, like, small, it is a, it's such a small enough scale story that you're like, what would be the massive replica, uh, repercussions in this world? There probably wouldn't be any. It'd probably be a thing of, yeah, there's just kind of, like, so it's so interesting because it feels like this probably could not alter things too much. It's almost like, hey, it feels less like, oh, this is a multiversal story and rather more like a a sub story that you would get in any universe. That's what it kind of feels like. But I don't know. Maybe in a grand scheme of things, it might set itself apart. Like, once again, we don't know if anything's going to be pulled from these individual uh, realities to kind of come together and culminate Avenger-esque style like the Guardians of the Multiverse last season or not. I don't know, it's just a fun, festive episode with a lot of interesting stuff to kind of keep in mind and, and, and get your mind wondering. Once again, it's always the what if of it all, being like, well, what if, what what are the like splintering effects of this? That's why this one in particular feels so interesting, because like I said, it just feels like such a small scale story that it almost feels like, it doesn't feel like a multiverse or a different reality. It feels like it could just be a side story made specifically to take place in any universe. Like, it doesn't seem like it'd have massive repercussions, but maybe it would. Like, Happy might be a Hulk, and what that might mean for the long run. I mean, the stuff with Happy might actually help push along. Maybe Banner becomes, like, Professor Hulk a lot quicker in this universe. Like, there's maybe a little bit more controlling of the Hulk in this universe. So, there could be broader stuff for it. and obviously uh justin got his revenge now he's getting locked up again so maybe he has even more time on his head so he can come back like stronger than ever and ready to strike back harder than ever i know that's been some talks from some people of like obviously he's been a uh antagonist we've never circled back to since um iron man 2 i think there have been talks of people saying like maybe he could make an appearance i don't know if anything's official we still haven't gotten other than the update of armor wars going from a disney plus show to a movie we haven't heard anything but justin i heard people theorizing like or not necessarily theorizing but feeling like justin i don't know if he traditionally is part of the armor wars story in the comics so i don't know it, maybe that's where people are pulling that from but i remember his name kind of getting tossed around for that i don't think anything official has ever been said but i think that was just people theorizing but i like i said i don't remember if that's on the basis of he's a part of armor wars or not but it'd be a great opportunity to have more uh, sam rockwell like we were able to get in, in this because he did voice himself uh, uh he did voice um justin in this so it'd be dope to have more uh sam rockwell in the mcu so but yeah, I'm excited to see where the next episode ends up taking us uh, tomorrow. It's good. We're saying that every single time. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see where the next episode takes us with all of this. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.